Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the December Bike Walk Commission meeting. Um, I'm Emily, chair of the commission, joined by Christine, Manny, and Nick Pappas, commissioners, as well as Greg and Dylene. Um, and then also our, on our agenda tonight, I'll be introducing our newest member of the commission, um, Becca, who is also joining us tonight. Um, as always, the first item on our agenda is public comment. So I will give a minute uh, for people who are joining us from the public. If there's anyone who wants to say anything now is the opportunity to do so. Oh, I see we have one member of the public, Rick, with his hands raised, if we wouldn't mind um, unmuting Rick. Okay, Rick, Rick, Rick yeah. you are, you're unmuted. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can, can hear you. Okay, I'm the uh, the new Director of Service Planning for Norwalk Transit. So um, I kind of took it upon myself to come to the meeting. I saw from the agenda from last time that uh, there was some discussion about shelters and I thought I would come on. Um, years ago, about 10 years ago, I worked on the bike plan for Greater Danbury. It was uh, from about 2013. It was the last project I think that was ever done for the Housatonic Valley Council of Elected Officials. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us, Rick. And yes, I think in our last meeting, we talked about one of the bus stop shelters. So uh, thank you for joining us. And I look forward to hopefully collaborating with you more as we go on. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to add? No, I just want to introduce myself. Great. Um, any other commissioners have any questions for Rick or comments? Oh, oh can you just repeat your title again? I'm sorry, I missed the, the, the title, Rick. Okay, Director of Service Planning. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say as a commissioner, thank you, Rick, for being here. That that's awesome that you that you saw the agenda and you're here. We've bus shelters have come up over the years quite a bit actually with this group. So um I would I would love to know how we can support, you know, that work here in the city for our residents. Thank you. Out of um, curiosity, because I'm new, um, obviously our name is the Norwalk Bike Walk Agenda. Where do buses fit into our um, stated mission? That's a great question. I know in our ordinance, we are, you know, a task force very focused around walkability and bikeability. I feel like maybe recently as we've done more um, supporting of those initiatives. We've noticed that like on bike to work day or um, when we do tabling at events, a lot of our people who are walking or residents using uh, public transit in addition to walking and biking, it kind of ties in that way. And some demonstrations we've done in the past would include like the bus demonstrations, like loading your bicycle on and off the bus. So definitely in the past we've collaborated with the transit district. And I'm excited to see, you know, how that continues to kind of transform. But I mean, I, I, I feel like it does tie in to our mission around creating those um, different modes of transportation and active transportation, the opportunities to take those. But if yeah, any other commissioners wanna chime in on how they see us um, fitting into the public transit realm, please. Feel free to add. In. I'm totally, I'm totally sold on the idea that um, because of how Norwalk's shaped, a lot of transit is going to have to be multimodal. Just wanted to know sort of what the fine print on it, on it is. Yeah, I don't know, Greg. Do you have anything you want to add, or or Christine? No, I, 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 
I definitely agree with what you said, Emily, about, you know, being multimodal and, you know, when you're, let's face it, when you're, you know, public transit rider, you become a pedestrian or you are a cyclist. Um, you don't just take the bus from front door to front door. Um, you know, there's only so many bus stops, so you have to be able to, to access them safely. So um, the, the, the infrastructure definitely is very similar, you know, putting in a bus stop without putting in any sidewalks, you know, and not making them accessible for pedestrians um, kind of makes it pointless. Um, so a lot of that all ties in together. Well, I understand, you know, bike walk, you know, where does the public transit realm fit in? There's definitely a big component there with the, with the bike walk commission um, because every, you know, public transit rider eventually will become a pedestrian or will become a cyclist in one at one time or another uh, during their trip. Um, any other members of the public um, have anything they want to add before we move on to our next agenda item here? Okay, um, I think that'll be it for public comment. I did have um, a, a individual that was going to join us, excuse me, while I pull up. Uh, their name, it was for our next agenda item here, actually, which was the CT State Wellness Committee that we had been meeting with um, recently. So I was, um, I invited, uh, it was, I believe, Pat and Julia, can you correct me on the names here? I'm so sorry, I'm trying to pull up this email. Um, it was Pat Baird from the Norwalk, uh, formerly Norwalk Community College, and now is the Connecticut State, um, uh, Connecticut St uh, State Norwalk, or CT State Norwalk School. And they are part of the uh, wellness committee there. And Julia and myself had a meeting with their team, which included Pat, as well as um, uh, Nicole Mandola and Paul Gallo. And so I invited them to tonight's meeting. Unfortunately, something came up and um, Paul was not able to join. However, we are looking forward to doing um, more activities with the school, including the walking path that we recently attended the opening of and improving access along that path for walking and potentially connecting it to um, biking as well as potentially doing some safety courses. Uh, with the college in collaboration in the spring. So we had a really nice kickoff meeting. I think it was just this past week um, uh, and they're going to have a meeting with their committee this month as well and kind of report on what we've talked about. But I wanted to just bring that up and then also give the opportunity to Julia to add anything else that you know we can do in collaboration with the health department and the university. Julie, if there's anything else you want to add there, if you're um, unavailable. I'm oh, I'm sorry, Julie, it's not here. even. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I was talking to her like she was here. I apologize. <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. Uh, so Julie and I had a really good meeting and I, I look forward to, you know, phase two uh, with that, with her and then bringing that into the educational committee, which is further down on our agenda here. But that's really all I wanted to uh, bring up with that point. And I did send an email to our commissioners just with a few more details on how that meeting went and those other opportunities to collaborate, I guess, quickly. Did any commissioners have any questions or follow-up items on that? We can um, dig into it more uh, in our later items here. Okay. Uh, the next item here then is our common council reappointments and appointments. I kind of hinted at the beginning of this. We uh, had the common council meeting last Tuesday. Uh, Nick uh, Pappas, myself, were reappointed. And then we had a new appointment of Becca Stoll. So I wanted to give her the opportunity to introduce herself and uh, a quick minute to talk about her self here, if you don't mind, Becca. Not in the least. I'm Becca. I live in East Norwalk, right by the cemetery and train station. As um, as I've gotten to know my community more, I've become more of an avid pedestrian, bus user, 
cyclist scooter around town. And I'm just excited to be part of making that all better for everyone. Thank you, Becca. Um, any questions for Becca from the public or the other commissioners? Welcome, Becca. Glad to have you here. Glad to be here. I'm sure I speak for the other few here. Excellent. Yep, yeah, we're glad to have you, Becca. Thank you for joining us. Um, and I guess then on that note, um, oh, I, I did put in the agenda here, Greg, um, any items from TMP that you may want to bring up? I wasn't sure if there was anything on your docket or. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I could definitely talk about some of the ongoing, um, you know, the recently completed and, and currently ongoing uh, infrastructure related projects that the city uh, is currently undertaking. So. Um, obviously, this summer we completed the Roaten Avenue sidewalks, which which was a, a transformative uh, project for the Roaten area. Um, you know, this year, on top of that, we also spent a lot of time around the Fox Run School area. Um, I know Emily, you were on the walk audit with us, um, and I believe Manny, you were with us as well uh, in 2023 when we did the walk audit uh, with the state of Connecticut around that school, and uh, we addressed a lot of the uh, concerns um, through that area. Um, you know, in coordination with Public Works uh, through the paving program, uh, TMP and DPW was a it was a great coordination between the two departments. Um, it's currently ongoing right now. They recently just paved um, Philo Street, but we shortened that crossing uh, at Philo at Richards Avenue. Um, you know, existing the the crosswalk was very long. Uh, it's at a stop controlled intersection. It was much larger, um, so we pulled that curb out. Um, you know, an extensive amount. Um, and shorten that crosswalk um, immensely. Um, so that recently was installed. Um, and we also teed up the intersection at Bet Marlia, um, which, you know, our goal was to calm traffic through that area because we have gotten a lot of, um, you know, customer service complaints from residents, um, difficulties uh, navigating, you know, turning out of the area uh, just because of the excessive speeds and the horizontal curvature of the roadways that were existing. So um, with these improvements, we're looking to, uh, you know, slow vehicle speeds through the area and also added an additional sidewalk um, along the southerly curb line on Philo Street uh, from Richards uh, to Little Fox Lane, a little past Little Fox Lane. Um, in addition to that, we also improved the sidewalks this year on Fox Run, um, just north of Philo, um, you know, kind of a continuation of the sidewalk project that TMP completed last year. Um, and we also did that school path. Um, there was a path um, from the from the school level that took you up to uh, Fox Run uh, Road and um, you know it was just kind of like a gravel eroded path um, and we actually put in a six foot wide uh, sidewalk um, so it's easily accessible for students um, and parents and staff to, to access Fox, Fox Run uh, safely um, and so we we kind of you know we checked a lot of the boxes um, you know that the that were addressed in the walk assessment uh, from that day, um, you know we also completed a section of um, on which lane a sidewalk segment and a retaining wall, um, which sets us up for continuing sidewalks on which lane. Um, the wall was you know was a pretty tight segment, um, so we had to build a retaining wall, and that's at Little Brook Road. Um, so we're able to put that small sidewalk segment in and that tees us up for next year doing sidewalks continuing on which lane uh, as part of the paving program next year. Um, and then obviously I don't know how many have been uh, on Westport Avenue recently, but we're currently ongoing with a sidewalk project, uh, filling a sidewalk gap on Westport Avenue at the intersection of Wolf Pit Avenue. Um, it's been, you know, that gap has been there for years um, and it's been begging for a continuation of sidewalk um so we're in under construction right now with that and we're also adding a pedestrian island uh on wolf pit avenue between the two crossings so that will definitely shorten uh the crossing for pedestrians there and when we look to uh to finish that uh before the end of this year um in addition another sidewalk segment um a little closer uh closer to the westport line in front of whole foods where the sidewalk just ends um so in a partnership with Westport, we're going to continue that sidewalk, um, you know, to the to the adjacent uh, crosswalk that's there today, where it's just grass 
um, and kind of a worn out path where people have walked today. Um, and then obviously through the winter, we're going to be continuing our Wall Street corridor uh, plans and uh, also the Hospital Hill plans as well. We're making great strides with that and we'll hope to get that out to uh, out to bid shortly. And uh, actually the item is on the ECD committee um, agenda for this coming week um, to approve for the mayor to sign uh, some forms as part of the, the grant program itself. So we have a lot of a lot of design work that we're currently ongoing and this winter is gonna be, <coughs> excuse me, it's gonna be vital for getting out to bid um, for next year. So a lot of exciting things. Amazing, okay. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. And just that last part, you said the F FB DC grant, or what was that? Sorry, that was the community mm -hmm. connectivity grant. <clears throat> community connectivity grant. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, I guess as it pertains to the bike walk commission, I know those those were a lot of project updates. Um, just from some past involvement we had with some of not these projects specifically, but like the, um, rep uh, not report, the survey that uh, Kyle was working on. Is that something that is still on the docket there somewhere or something that the Bike Walk Commission can support TMP in um, um, assisting or, or distributing that sort of transportation survey? Um, so at the moment, <clears throat> you know, it's definitely kind of been on hold since Kyle left, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, Sorry. oh, no worries. <laughs> I didn't see you coughing there. Take your time. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so at this moment, we kind of have a hold on that a little bit. Um, we're kind of <clears throat> picking up as many pieces that Kyle left, um, keep things in motion. Um, so at this time, I don't have an update on that. <clears throat> okay. No problem. I'll I'll backlog this for later. But I guess does any um, do any other commissioners have any questions for Greg on any of those project updates he mentioned? I know we kind of flew through a bunch of different ones. Um, but anything specific to TMP projects? from commissioners. Okay. And I guess moving on to the next agenda item here, our annual meeting with the mayor. I know, Christine, we mentioned, uh, you know, going before the Common Council and having that annual just kind of report. Um, we, I, I ended up scheduling a meeting with Nicholas Pappas my, and myself with Tom Livingston and Mayor Rilling, and we reviewed our strategic plan, uh, the one that Tanner had put together for 2024, uh, kind of reviewing our accomplishments from this year and talked about a strategic plan, kind of outlining our goals and alignments for 2025. Um, it was very much just a discussion. We haven't formally come up with anything, but some um, pieces that I definitely want to touch on that we talked about were these opportunities to have uh, safe cycling courses and educational materials and the focus in that area as we grow our educational subcommittee. And then also um, continuing to um, collaborate with the different departments in the city. So we talked about our open street event and working with the parks department and TMP on really improving that event and making that um, an annual goal of ours. And then um, our distribution for the bike uh, to work week and bike walk roll to school events and collaborating with the um, you know, community um, having those opportunities to give out bike lights and our bike valet program. So we, we definitely, we talked a lot about the activities we've done these past few years and what we focused on this year and how we can really transform that into um, another really uh, good strategic plan for next year. Um, but I, I realize I'm talking about a lot of different things. Nick, was there anything from our meeting that you want to um, bring up or highlight or talk about in particular um, 
not quite. I, I did get a good uh, feeling from Tom and the mayor in terms of like them wanting to offer us help and also some ideas on some things that uh, or rather some events that they might like to see us uh, take a little more of a charge for uh, that used to be popular in the city and um, just kind of fell off as people have come and gone in different areas of the city. Um, but overall, got a pretty good feeling from the meeting. Christine, I see you have a question. Yeah, thanks. I So I'm glad uh, that you had that meeting. That's great. I guess why, why was Nick, you mentioned the events to kind of pick up some of the slack that's been lost. What, did they name the events, specific things? Yeah, they named some events that uh, used to be done. Uh, one in particular that they were pretty excited, or rather that used to be an exciting occasion would be a Christmas time bike giveaway that they'd give like a, a whole bunch of bikes. And um, they said that if that was something uh commission could take on, it was uh, really well received by the public and it seemed appropriate for our group. Uh, I was interested because it also sounded like something that could be a great thing to do for the community. Uh, and we got contact information for the people who used to organize it. And it's really just a matter of finding out more as to what the logistics are from there and see if it's feasible for us to do. Uh, but didn't really go much past, just uh, this would be great for you guys to do if you can take this on. Uh -huh. I'm just curious because uh, what the who the contact is or from what organization? Because I know uh, the police... Uh, Okay, maybe um you can let me know because I I have a contact Northeast Cycles they refurbish bikes but that sounds like a good, great project and also the police used to have the bikes from their auction from like stolen property and stuff they would have auction I was just curious if it was the police involvement there you're not okay All I right. think we we talked about that one as well Christine that was another one that came up. But definitely ways to get involved with the uh, bike giveaway of sorts. But then also, like, um, we also mentioned the Norwalk Bike Co-op uh, pop-up events. So those bike repair opportunities and potentially partnering with a bicycle shop to make those more reoccurring. And that was something that, you know, at, at potentially Norwalk or CT State Norwalk would be a good location for those sorts of pop-ups or the park like we've done in the past. So I know either the bike giveaways or bike pop-ups came up and those would be good things to integrate into our um, strategic plan for 2025. Yeah, that sounds great. And maybe we could put on the agenda for next time, you know, like one thought comes to mind, like if we have um, use some of our budget money for some, buy some bicycles and then have like a matching, like out in the city, put it out there, you know, matching and get more bikes that way. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea, Christine. Definitely. Sorry, I'm just writing that down so I don't forget. Thanks, Christine. Um, I guess I I think that's it. Unless Nick, was there anything else for the meeting with the mayor? I think we're kind of transitioning into our next big agenda item, which is the strategic plan review. Um no, that's all I got. Okay. So then why don't I pull up the strategic plan itself so we can look at this. Is this, can we read this? And, or can everyone see my screen actually? Let's <laughs> start there. <laughs> yep, it's nice and zoomed in, I'd say. Okay. So for reference, um, and Becca, I, I don't know if you've seen this document yet, but this is our strategic plan for 2024. So this was really our goal for the year and how we're measuring our success and our, kind of our roadmap to where we're going as a commission and our alignment with our ordinance and what we were originally kind of designed to do here. So 
for our SMART goals, starting with the Safe Routes to School program, um, we definitely, we had them speak on one of our commission calls. We ended up doing the bike walk roll to school event days more than one day in October, which was a lot of fun. So I feel like we really built this one out well, and we've established a really good relationship with Kristen Levesque and her team with um, the Safe Routes to School program, and then with the Norwalk Public Schools as well. Manny, you you really led this effort. I don't know if you want to add anything else there. I just wanted to I just wanted to uh, thank Emily, um, Christine, and Jalia because I feel like collaboratively, I, I feel like you know we all together help maintain momentum on the education subcommittee and especially when we were trying to put together the October event or collaborate and find where to, you know, where to, how to make it work basically and collaborate well with the school district. I feel like all of y'all pulled together and, and really helped with sustaining it and letting it basically get to the finish line. So I, I just want to share my appreciation to you guys. Thanks, Penny. And yeah, thank you, Christine. And thank you, Julia. It definitely was a team effort. And Brianna, who's not on this call tonight, was also, you know, very critical. And Jill and Joanna from um, the public schools, like Manny was saying, yeah, go team. <laughs> so I feel like that was a really great um, goal for us this year. And I feel like we can continue to build on that and our involvement in that sort of program, especially with the public school in, um partnership we have now. So I would love to see this uh, continue to build in 2025. Um, the next item here in our 2024 list, we worked on posting more consistent social media and our goal was once every two weeks. I, I feel like, and Julie, I think I did see you joined now recently. I, you know, we, the, I would say at least, yeah, maybe once every two weeks we got content out. I think the challenge was making sure it was both in English and Spanish, at least on my end. I feel like the health department, you know, we're resharing content a lot. So I know you guys have that down to kind of a science there. Um, but I don't know if there was any notes or comments or feedback you had on our social media kind of strategy and how we're sharing this educational content. We did get, oh, quickly, I just want to add, um, from the Watch For Me uh, Connecticut group sent us some educational material that we were able to kind of reproduce and share on our social media. So we've, we've had some really good opportunities to collaborate with other groups this way and connect with other you know, local organizations to Norwalk. So I definitely feel like we're getting a lot out of it. But yeah, Julia, if there's anything else you want to add to that. I don't really have anything else, Emily. I think the the goal is still feasible. And honestly, you've been posting way more than I have, but you've been doing a great job. Um, and watch for me, CT. I even use that. I think we can use that page in general. Um, they do like tips all the time. Um, so just resharing that stuff often um, for educational mm -hmm. purposes, but I think it's still fine. Great. And then just in terms of other uh, forms of communication here, Manny, I know we're still working on kind of a video each quarter and having video material that we can reference and share um, through as a bike walk commission. And then in addition to that is the email newsletter every quarter. I know that was kind of a work in progress too, and it kind of turned into email reminders um, of certain, um, you know, project milestones or the, the meeting the commission meeting reminders and those sorts of things so yeah um, I just want to add I think I, I I'd like to keep the the quarterly goal but I think for next year I'd like to see it a little more finessed and focused maybe and I think that's some of the conversation we had you know mid-year kind of like figuring out what is the what is the right approach to um to take with with you know being able to produce videos for the bike walk commission so I kind of I'd like to revisit it with like kind of a, a more focused intention on on how to utilize it for the for 2025. I agree. I think that's a really good point. I'm definitely open to that. Okay. Um, anything else? Any other commissioners want to add to the social media point or any strategy? 
there they want to incorporate potentially into 2025? Well, could I just, I just want to, um, it's not about um, that social media, because I think we're, you're doing a great job, Emily, and, and Manny with the videos. You know, I think it's it's a lot of work. I mean, maybe I have students at my school that maybe we can get a student to help with this too, somehow. Um, they might enjoy doing this. Um, but what I want to just mention for like um, back at the, you know, and maybe people in the public that the the safe routes to school, like Greg is really instrumental in getting the infrastructure, the grant money for that. So it's, it's a, you know, it's a whole kind of uh, multi-layered program, safe routes to school. So. Thank you. Yeah. If there's anything else we can do, Greg, in that program, I know you're, you're, pretty well in tune with the grants that come up and opportunities and letting us know how we can get further involved. But if you foresee anything in 2025, that would be a good opportunity for the Bike Walk Commission to get more involved with. I'm sure you'll let us know. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we have, um, you know, we, we've worked with a lot of the schools. Um, you know, obviously we did another safe walk assessment, um, walk, uh, walk assessment for Cranberry School as well. Um, you know, so we're always, uh, you know, talking with schools to see how they, you know, what kind of improvements they hear from, you know, parents and students, um, who will live it every day. So, uh, we're, we're consistently, um, you know, going, looking at how we can upgrade, uh, the infrastructure, especially around schools. Excellent. Okay. Uh, then moving on to events, which I think this year it's been very transformative, especially as we've introduced our bike valet program and as an opportunity to really build on not only just tabling, but assisting cyclists or scooterists or anyone really with any form of active transportation vehicle uh, to offer that as a free service at these events. So the, our goal this year was to provide the bike valet service at three events. I think we we did three events, right, Nick? I think maybe there's one just not listed in here potentially. No, I think that's we, I think we're one shy of that goal and the other goal. Okay, just one shy of each. Right. Okay. Earth Day, nice festival. Oh, and then oh, I see. Okay. We didn't do this, so no half marathon. But I, I encourage definitely commissioners, maybe not in this meeting, but for our next meeting to come up with some ideas for other opportunities for tabling. Another one that I emailed our commissioners on recently included that opportunity with the um, Connecticut State College, having opportunities to do either bike valet or tabling opportunities there for certain events they have uh, during the school year. But if it's um, a local organization or another, um, I, we mentioned this in our meeting with the mayor too, the difference between the city event insurance and private event insurance. But uh, again, we're just coming up with some ideas for events where we can offer bike valet as the bike walk commission. I, I think that would be good to build on for next year. Does any other commissioners have any thoughts on that? No, I think that's good to you to so kind of, um, what's the right word, to kind of get down to like understanding the those insurance differences and that sort of thing, just to, you know, help us navigate that better, you know, as kind of being an arm of the city, but not quite, you know, a city um, entity. Mm -hmm. I feel that of the events we did, like Earth Day was a really successful one, partly because the purpose of Earth Day was like getting to the green via biking or walking or public transit or whatnot. So those like events like that, where it's like kind of well-suited for that sort of opportunity. But, I mean, they're hard to come by, but I, I feel like, yeah, maybe coming up with some more um, options. Like I know in the this time of year too, it's like cold and dark, but there was the Halloween night fair and now there's the Christmas tree lighting. We were talking about that. 
as well, if that was an opportunity for people to um, park their bikes with the bike valet at the Christmas tree lighting. But so potentially for next year, I feel like that, you know, it's a little too late to start planning that, but um, yeah, just keeping in mind that we would love to continue doing this and maybe keeping it at these numbers too. Maybe three is the right number of events for us for now. Okay. Tabling at community events. Um, that was all, yep, well and done. Well, well done everyone who participated and volunteered. I'm so thankful for all our volunteers as well. Some of them are here in the public. Oh, uh, Becca, I see you have your hand raised. Um, if you're soliciting more ideas for events, it'd be really great to try to do Pride in the Park next year since it is the largest Pride event in the entire state of Connecticut and it is in excellent biking weather. That's a great idea. Okay. So I think my goal will be to start before our next meeting to start putting together a 2025 list, but I won't do it on today's call. I figure it's a good opportunity to do that outside the call and then come back to our January session with, you know, fresh ideas and a plan that we can all review and vote on together. If that sounds good to everyone. Okay. Great. Um, accountability. So Tanner is unfortunately not able to join us tonight, but I think for the most part, aside from maybe not checking in in September, I really like this item and just making sure that we're aligned with our strategic plan. So I would be definitely open to keeping this in the 2025 strategic plan and then just doing like a quarterly check-in. The other thing I would love to do, Greg, specifically with TMP is have a TMP check-in where, you know, with instead of, you know, having you go through all the project status on these calls, if you would be open to having a meeting with uh, the Bike Walk Commission chair and another commissioner um, just to check in on like project status and get kind of an update, whether it's in person or virtually for 30 minutes. Is that something that seems like a, a good idea? Oh, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, I think that's something we can definitely take a look at. Is it something that maybe like quarterly you would want to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't quarter. see why we can't, you know, just have a, a, you know, a call every quarter and just talk about the ongoing projects so we don't, um, you know, we don't waste time during the, the monthly meetings going through. And this way we can, you know, inform the rest of the commission as well uh, what's what's going on. Perfect. Christine, yeah, I see you have your hand raised. I think, I don't know if it's like further down on here. I can't remember on this document, Emily, but we should have somewhere about the budget, our annual budget, so we can be held accountable. And, you know, when it's not like last minute, like we should have the date where, you know, maybe a special meeting or dedicated to that or because uh, we've been caught kind of, you know, unprepared for that before. So I think that's a really good point. And I, I, I don't know if budget is anything in our strategic plan. But maybe having yeah, at the start of the year just a, a an outline of some sort of plan for our budget. Did the mayor mention the budget for the for the um commission or like you know at one point it was reduced? Is it staying the same or does Greg do you know that or did the mayor bring that up at your meeting with Nick? And I I don't think we talked about budget. Nick, correct me if I'm wrong. And I oh, would probably I would probably defer to Greg. He may know more than I do about our budget at this time. Um. So as far as I I know, it's it's the same as it was. Um. I'm not sure with the new fiscal year if it's going to be increased, but um. But I know for this current ongoing fiscal year, it, it was the same. Um. So. But we're already uh, we're already almost into January and July 1st will come quick. Yeah. And maybe in the next meeting, we could have kind of the understanding of that 
for the new member, Becca, <clears throat> excuse me, like, are, you know, are we at zero balance? Are we, I don't, I don't have any idea, honestly. I feel like maybe we spent it. I, I don't know. So maybe for next meeting. I can definitely bring or make a note to bring that up in next meeting and then figure that out for you, Christine. I can hunt that down. <laughs> um, but perfect. I think that should be a uh, part of our strategic plan is just to make sure that we're spending budget accordingly. Um, our check-in with the mayor, I think I'm happy to say we can cross this one off. We did that um, this past month. Um, and then this was that um, piece that you had brought up, that report to the Common Council. And I know, I apologize, because I know Tanner's brought this up before, and we talked about it maybe in our last call. But I, I don't believe we have a written report that we submit, correct? Or I can I can hold this off till our next call too. But I, I are you, don't are you asking me or Greg? I don't know. All I know is it's in the ordinance. That's why I asked to have it on here. Oh, okay. I think Tanner was having conversations with Josh Goldstein, um, who's the chair of the ECD committee. Um, and I think he Josh had made a mention that, you know, a written report ahead of time would, would work best. Um, so I think just having more conversations with Josh to see what would be best and how to present it to the committee uh, ahead of time um, so that it's not brand new uh, heading into the into the committee meeting. Okay. And Greg, can you or Emily remind me and the new members here about ECD stands for? Uh, Economic and Community Development Committee. Was there any specific reason it was for their August meeting or can it be at any meeting? Yeah, I, I'm, I can't say yeah. it's for the August meeting. It sounds like I'll, I'll just follow up with Tanner and Josh on that one, but we'll definitely have that for, for 2025 if we didn't have it for 2024. Okay, um, I know we had on here as well our Fairfield County Greenway grant. I know there was a lot of work done on that. We're still continuing um, on with this application, and there have been other grants that came our way intermittently. I feel like this year we completed two, or I'm sorry, we completed a grant. <laughs> I don't think it was this one specifically, but it was that um, it was that one that Greg you. Um, completed for us the I want to say it was CT deep that one uh the micro grant I apologize it's not this one yeah it was the mic micro grant active transportation micro grant yes thank you um so I feel like uh for our strategic plan having at least some grant assistance whether it's like um a final number or if it's just you know, effort made or con contribution to grant support for TMP and for uh, other opportunities that may come to the Bike Walk Commission. I don't know if any other commissioners have any thoughts on this, but I feel like just having maybe like the opportunity to work on three grants is probably more than enough or a grant would be, I think, more sufficient. But I don't know. I know, Nick, you were in charge of um, or you were responsible for completing some applications is this past year. How do you feel about having that or continuing on that responsibility? Well, I think um, perhaps a general goal of like a grant is feasible, but not every grant is created equally, um, or rather not every grant application is created equally. Uh, for example, the active transportation micro grant, I think was kind of, uh, written so that small organizations could, uh, apply and get the funding. Whereas I've seen other grant applications that are much more involved and, uh, just would take more time that, uh, as volunteers might not be something that we can, uh, re responsibly commit to, um, so having some kind of like overarching goal to do multiple grants 
without an understanding of like what kind of grants we might get into uh, with like the different levels of difficulty, I don't think would be in our best interests. Okay. I guess there's room for yeah, some thought on how we want to approach grant writing and, and that sort of responsibility as a commission. Um, any other thoughts from any other commissioners? Um, I know this year too, we, we had bike share program on here. This definitely took a backseat to other priorities, but I know this is something that's kind of been on the back burner and we saw the city of New Haven implemented, re-implemented a bike share program this year. So um, I know we kind of pivoted. I feel like it's a good pivot to before getting into bike share, having these bike safety courses as a focus for our 2025 plan. Potentially, but just knowing that there was a lot of effort made into a bike share program and um, it got all the way into design or there was a vendor that we were partnered with and there's a lot of notes in history there. So just keeping that in mind that it was a priority. Um, but then that kind of uh, ties us into the League of American Bicyclists. Uh, we have Christine, who is our League Certified Bicyclist. Uh, instructor and LCI, excuse me. Um, and so with that, uh, safety courses is a great opportunity for us to not only partner with the League of American Bicyclists to have these listed on their site and um, that resources through them with Christine. Um, but one of our other goals here is to get one more League certified instructor. There's a class happening in um, I believe it's April, the weekend of April 4th in New Haven. And so I think when we do talk about budget, I would love to sponsor um, either a commissioner or an interested volunteer or uh, potentially someone from our educational subcommittee to get the um, certification. And Christina, I don't know if you want to talk a little more about what that uh, certification is for those who may not know. Uh, I, honestly, I... Not right now. We brought it up before. Um, and yeah, Becca is new here, but um, I believe they changed it. So I don't want to misspeak on um, exactly before it entailed, you know, a, a weekend, three days. Um, you'd have to take someone would need to take the intro course and then the comprehensive course. So um, I'm not prepared right now to speak on it, but I can the next time. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, it's just to, to sum it up very briefly, it's a safety course uh, for bike safety instructions. And it's whether it's young kids or adults, it's setting you up to be, you know, a, a licensed instructor for that sort of responsibility. And Emily, we, we did talk offline about, you know, I put together a proposal before I presented it to the commission for me teaching a safety class for and being compensated. But it was proposed that that's a conflict of interest. So I have my proposal. I could present it to the city and, you know, do this work in the spring. Um, so I can, we can talk offline about that more because we have talked about it. Excellent. Yeah, that sounds great. That kind of yeah ties into what we'll talk about in our educational subcommittee update. But definitely just, you know, our membership with the league and then having more league certified instructors ties into our bike friendly community application and status and how we can continue to build on that ultimately. Um, so I know our we entered and our goal was to or our 2023 award. We have an honorable mention. I thought it was this year we got it, but I guess it was. We submitted the application in 2023 and got awarded at the beginning of 2024. And if we do want to build on that honorable mention, the next status is bronze. So um, just keeping that in mind that that will help us build our um, credit there. Um, by having another LEAF certified instructor. Yeah, I okay. definitely think we should. And that application is twice a year. So. 
Okay. Oh, Becca has her hand up right now. Oh, go ahead. Um, obviously, if, if Christine is more prepared to speak about what it is being a league certified instructor at a later date, but I'm wondering how do we how do we make sure there's accountability? Like having two instructors is great until we have zero classes, you know? Like until we're getting in with the this is a lot of stuff. Um as as a civilian, um, I attended a meeting in New Haven with Tanner of um NCAT, which is New Haven Coalition for Active Transportation. And there was a lot of talk about, you know, the work that they're doing specifically in the seventh, in the second grade and the fourth and fifth grades, I believe, to have like cycling training in schools as part of phys ed. You know, if we're going to create a generation of trained safe cyclists who stop at red lights and use hand signals, because I assume that's a lot of like what this stuff is, is, you know, behave in a predictable way, you know, and make it abundantly clear to cars what you're gonna do because cars are not used to you and are not necessarily gonna accommodate you. Like having an instructor is all well and good if we do something with it. That's my only thought. So I don't know where we stand as far as talking to the schools and talking to young kids, you know, if we can get involved at um the with Norwalk Community Health Center or with all the stuff that's going on at 98 South Main. I think there's a lot of potential there. I'm also very excited about bike share. So if this is what it takes to make bike share happen, I'm in. Definitely. Becca, I'm glad you brought that up because it's definitely what we're talking about in our educational subcommittee. And we just had this really great meeting with the um, Connecticut State Wellness Committee. Jalea, now I think you are here. I was mentioning you earlier and didn't realize you weren't on, but we had a, a really good meeting with the college student or not students, but the college program there. So I'm envisioning, hopefully, maybe potentially starting with the college courses. But to your original point, what are we going to do with the league certified instructor? The other thought I had, and I brought this up on a call before, is um, Brianna Iorfino from New Vance Health, who's been collaborating with us a lot recently as well. Um, she does a bike safety course for younger students. Um, so if she was interested in completing this program, she's already doing this, you know, full time with New Vance Health, and she's been volunteering time with us, it would be great to sponsor her to get this sort of certification. So, I mean, I, I haven't formally asked her yet. So <laughs> I feel like I've talked about it a few times, maybe she's heard it on this call. But the next time we have our educational subcommittee meeting, Becca, I would love to invite you to join that um, to do more. Yeah, and one thing I just want to mention, so uh, about maybe four years ago, I ran a volunteer the summer camps and the education program, and Nancy Rosette helped too, so we did uh, help a lot of campers. Um, I just share a quick little anecdote, if I don't mind, but the other day I was on um, East Avenue and uh, down by the... Um, Country Convenience Cranberry Market, and there was it was about four thirty, so the sun was setting. It was the cloudy day, and there was a little boy on his bicycle going the opposite on the wrong side of the road, riding his bike. And I looked in my rearview mirror, and then he crossed. So if you know East Avenue down there, it's very, very, very busy. So uh, I had a chance to uh, pull over and have a little conversation with him. And he assured me he was safe because he had his bike light on. However, he was dressed in the dark and uh, we had a nice chat and uh, he ended up walking home, which he was close to because I was very nervous. And I told him, like, this is not good. So clearly there is a need in this city for bike education. And um, I also have a concern. I'm just wondering, like, there's so much development going on. I think our commission has a responsibility to when we're promoting cycling and pedestrian safety with all these new, the, the traffic is going to increase and everything that maybe somehow with every new development, our commission can make a recommendation or ask, have an ask, like what will you do for pedestrian safety or bicycle safety, you know, to hold them accountable, these developments or the developers to so somehow you know, like with affordable housing, when they build something that they have to have at least one like ratio has to be for affordable housing, these new developments. So maybe something similar like that. Just free associating here, thinking about that. So, Especially because I think a lot of them are sort of touting bikeability, walkability, you know, access to transit. Like that's a big selling point for these Sono luxury rentals is that you could maybe live here without a car at all. You know, and I'm like, great. Does your building have bike racks? 
So if I could just hop in real quick. So with, so obviously recently we passed a police street ordinance in the city. Um, so that means that, so next we're coming out with the complete streets guide. So whether any project, whether it's completed by the city of any department or any private developer, they need to follow the complete streets guide. So that's all part, that's all part of any developer. They can't just do whatever they want. It has to be within the complete street guidebook. And if they don't do it and there needs to be an exemption that needs to go through the complete streets process. So whether it's a city or a private developer, it all needs to follow the complete street guidebook. And that's written in the ordinance that was approved last month. Yeah, that deserves a round of applause. That's awesome news. Greg, one question I have for you is like state construction. Is that also under complete streets ordinance? Like if the state comes in and has to tear up something? Well, the state, it's it's a little harder under that regard, but we still like the state of Connecticut also has their own complete streets um, guide that they are a complete street or um, with, the, with the complete street guideline, I should say, that they came out with last year um, that any project that they do, they're supposed to, um, you know, consider biking and walking infrastructure as part of their project. So, um, you know, that's written into their complete streets guidelines as well. Um, so we any major project, you know, we're always in coordination with DOT. So, you know, unfortunately, it's not specifically our road, but at the same time, it's still we still look at it and we still most cases are reviewing projects that the state is is performing work on. And there is a lot of coordination, um, you know, between the city and, and the state. Um, but they also, like I said, they have their own complete street guideline that they have to follow, or at least they should be following as well. Great. That um, I, I have a, a quick question um, just related to that as well. Um, is it the Fairfield Avenue bridge? So like did that, I think that's state, right? The state built that bridge over the, over 95. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was part of the state. Yeah. Okay. Cause did that have to fall into the complete streets guidelines or because like you said, the, the state operates a little differently. Um, they, they don't have to. That's a tough one. So in that in that case, so it's not like we uh, so the ordinance had just passed, um, but that's really the overpass. You know, it's just a short, you know, in the grand scheme, it's just a short overpass section of Fairfield Avenue. Um, so it's not like it's a long stretch. Um, and, you know, a project like that, you know, it's not like they tore all the 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 entire physical structure, all the concrete, you know, a lot of that was still maintained, all the footings and whatnot. So they really just, you know, kept as much as they could and then just rebuilt it, um, you know, with, you know, new infrastructure over it. So the width of the bridge did really change. It's not like they were able to widen the bridge or narrow the bridge. Um, you know, they kept it pretty similar um, in that regard. So there are some exemptions to the complete street. Um, you know, so they, I think they really just built what was existing um, to that you know, to what the limits they had previously. Thanks. But that is a good question. No, thank you. Yeah, no, because I noticed, yes, I was at Lowe's yesterday and I noticed that the bridge is almost done, which I was pretty shocked. Yeah, they actually had a press conference today um, with the governor and the DOT commissioner was there as well. Um, so they had a, a big uh, ribbon cutting uh, today. Um, to, to formally uh, complete the work. You know, they've been working nonstop pretty much since May, uh, since when it happened. So I, it's been a priority of the state uh, to get it done, um, you know, and, and open. I think they were targeting for a spring, but they they were uh, they were well ahead of schedule. Cool. All right. Um, I guess I uh, we left off on the agenda. I think we were talking about our strategic plan and 2025 brainstorming, but I guess just to wrap that up, what I would love to do is that document I'll send back out to everyone. If we can come to our January 2025 meeting, maybe I'll, I'll come up with an outline and send it to the commissioners as well. But I'll, I would love to have everyone just kind of collaborate before our next meeting and come up with some um, 
I not really new and improved, but just our, our 2025 strategic plan so that we can vote on it and commence in January, if that sounds good to everyone. Okay, perfect. Great. Um, and then we've kind of touched on our remaining agenda items here. Uh, the active grant application status, Greg, I don't know if you have any other updates on that um, from the I, ones that we've talked about. I do actually. Um, so oh. let me be the first to say that you all, your application was su successful and uh, you all were awarded uh, the money uh, for the active transportation micro grant, um, you know, from when it was submitted uh, back in September. Um, so congratulations. Um, so that's, you know, when you, we talked about funding before, um, you know, that's additional funding that that you have um, now at your disposal, um, you know, which were like helmets, locks, brochures, there's leaf cycling instructor training. Um, there's a budget in there for that as well. Um, so keep in mind, this is a grant, so the money can't sit forever. Um, so spend it because you were awarded the money. Um, so, you know, Let's start establishing, you know, a, a plan moving forward on how the money will be spent based on the items and the application that you all requested um, and how the money can be spent. Because um, I'm not sure what the reporting status is for the grant money uh, through Westcog. So we may have to report on what money has been spent. Um, I was looking through the through the letter and it didn't specify anything. But usually with the grants, you have a, you know, a limit, a, a timeline when the money has to be at least encumbered. Um, to spend. So just keep that in mind uh, going forward. Uh, this item is actually going to be on the uh, Economic Community Development Committee meeting um, on Thursday because uh, the mayor has to sign it. So with any grant uh, funding, um, you know, no matter what the dollar amount is, whether it's 5000 or $101 million, it doesn't matter. Um, the mayor has to uh, sign it. So the Common Council must approve it. So It'll be on the ECD meeting uh, on Thursday uh, for approval um, for the mayor to, to move forward to, for the Common Council, and then the mayor will be able to sign it, and then we can submit back to Westcog, and the money can be deposited to the city um, for you guys to spend. Um, so probably, you know, in quarter one of 25, uh, the money should be uh, in the city's um, account. Um, so it'll be under a different a different account, so it'll be a city, city grant account. Um, that we'll be able to spend the money uh, based on the items that you all requested. That's amazing news. Thank you so much, Greg. And yeah, thank you to all our commissioners who put in work getting that done. That's really awesome news. How can you remind me of how much money it is that we were able to it was secure? Four four thousand seven hundred and eighty eight dollars. So the wow. max was max was five grand. And okay. there's also another solicitation that's yeah, that's um, the deadline is Friday, December 13th. I know we had talked about it in November. I don't know if there's any been any movement on uh, the apply because you can apply. There's four solicitations every year. You can apply. You can apply twice. So we applied in Q3 and then if we're able to get this and this will be Q4 that we can apply. And you said it's due on the 13th, and I, I do remember us talking yeah. about it. Um, is it it's something that you have to ultimately submit? Is it something that we started and, yeah? Yeah, the city would ultimately have to submit it um, because it needs to come from, you know, it, it's based on, so the grants coordinator will, will ultimately submit it uh, from the mayor's office because um, you are a city entity. Um, you're not a 501c3. So it'd have to come to your municipality. I don't know, Nick. I I feel like I know I asked you this maybe last time, but is there any chance that you have bandwidth to do another grant before the thirteenth for the deadline? So where we kind of left off is uh, we were gonna circle back on what exactly we were gonna ask for on the grant, and I think that just kind of slipped through the cracks. Okay. Is there a commissioner that feels passionate about filling out this grant application before the deadline on December 13th? 
Well, I think maybe, I don't know if Nick, Emily, and uh, I would be willing to like maybe have a chat about like, well, I mean, we would have to, well, we wouldn't have to have the whole commission, but to figure out like what would we apply for and why, because if we were just granted, you know, 4,000, I, I don't know. Yeah, to be clear, I have no problem uh, helping out with the application again. It's just, uh, I think, we should be a little more strategic in uh, what we ask for money for. Like, uh, there's always the option of just recycling the old application, but I don't really think that'd be our, in our best interest. I think we should try and be a little more strategic in what we're asking for. I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't want to waste an opportunity. And if the mayor mentioned a Christmas giveaway or a holiday giveaway, like, you know, we, I, we guess we'd have to figure out if we're, do we have storage? Like, do we have storage for bicycles? Okay, do we have space, right? Do we have space? I guess we could keep it in the Yankee Doodle garage where the rest of the um, supplies are kept. I mean, we don't have an infinite amount of space, so just keep that in mind. Um, also, just keep in mind the the grant also is, there are restrictions to the grant as far as what to apply for. This so it's non-infrastructure related um, funds. Um, so just, just keep that in mind as well. And then also look at the rest of your budget. How can the rest of the, the, you know, the operating budget that you guys have from the city, what can that be utilized for? If you can check the boxes for like swag items, helmets, uh, you know, bike lights, uh, items like that, brochures, you can buy those with the grant funding because that's what the grant is for. And then that frees up your city operating funds you know, for something else. Like cracks potentially. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, keep, you know, if you ask for five, that, you know, there's a, I believe you had $8,000 last year. So that means, you know, you can have a total of $18,000 annually. Well, could you send me the application or how can I just go online and look at that? I, Nick, I don't know. Did you get the application? Because I feel like you were going to work on it and I was going to help you. And I, I don't think I ever got the application. Yeah, but there's there's some email floating around when I'd uh, prepared the application. And um, I can dig that up and uh, resend it out so that everyone can refamiliarize themselves with the formatting of it. Yeah. And, and I'm not so sure about the bike racks, but because we seem to have a lot of that. And but I, I just think it's a good opportunity. So if you guys look, I, I sent an email on October 24th um, that has all the links and the directs, um, you know, when it has to be in by. Um, so if you look back, if you look back at your email, um, there's the uh, there's the, you know, brings you right to the website and the, the micro grant guidelines and the application itself. Um, so it was on October 24th, if you want to look back at your email. Craig, can you send that to me? Because on October 24th, I was not yes. yet a commissioner. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Becky. Thank you, Craig. Okay. So for, for this application, I think Christine and Nick, if you guys, and Becca, if you want to get involved as well, want to coordinate if it's possible to complete the application. It sounds like we may need to just discuss quickly what we want out of this application versus what we applied for and won in our previous application. But I, I think it's, yeah, I don't want to miss an opportunity, like you said, Christine. So I think this might be important to try and complete before the 13th. Um, if uh, the other commissioners agree, Nick, Christine, Manny, Becca. I would like to uh, echo Greg's point, though, in terms of um, where are we at with our already allotted city budget? And, and like, have we already extinguished the extent of that? Like, if we already um, have plans for the full 8,000, uh, then yeah, it makes sense for us to like, uh, get another grant going for some more money so that we can do more. But if we don't even have plans for what we already have without needing permission from anyone, uh, we might want to consider getting a plan for that first. 
Well, one thing I noticed, and I don't want to take up too much time here. That's why we can maybe meet offline. But here's an example. Here's a, they saying a hold a bicycle maintenance training at community center. Like, I think we could agree that is kind of a deficit for us. And it's a very popular thing. People come and want their bikes repaired for free. And it's, it's adults, it's children. It's always like a line at these events that we have had the co-op. So if we can pay some mechanics and, and have this kind of an event. I, I think we can use that money to pay a mechanic. It sounds like we can, cause it's, it's here. So I think we could spend it like that and have quite a few sessions of, you know, and then also to show, demonstrate how many people came through for a bike repair. And teach so. them basic skills, like fix a flat, oil a chain, you know, all the, all the things I've had to teach myself on multi-day bike trips. Yeah, so having it, right, so having them training how to do them themselves and also fix their bikes, exactly. I love this idea. So, so for now, it sounds like, Nick, to answer your question, I just as a note from earlier, too, I'm going to find out where we stand with our budget and our budget spend so that we can have that idea. But I think to answer the overall question of whether or not we should apply for this grant before the 13th, I feel like I'm leaning towards yes, knowing that, yeah, we're going to have to spend all our budget and we should have a plan for that. But I don't think that should prevent us from applying, applying for this grant. Oh, Becca, go ahead. Um, Once we know where we stand with numbers, I realize that it's, it's, it's a little too tight for us to like, you know, get any sort of presence going. It's like the holiday market. But like, if we knew we had the grant money to say raffle off a bicycle at the holiday market, like that feels like sort of a, an easy lift. Even if we, you know, like you will not take delivery of your bike until at least January 31st, but somebody can like put an envelope under, under the tree or by the menorah that says, you know, you're getting a bike, you know? I would love to have like a bike giveaway for next Christmas, like 2025 yeah. bike giveaway. Yeah. I, I would love to plan for that next year. I think, yeah, it's pretty tight to do it for this year, but. I mean, even definitely. if we had something like, depending on what gear we own, if we could raffle off helmets or lights or something. Bike lights for this time of year is very smart too. And I think we have like some leftover from our giveaway recently, but yeah, we, we, got a lot of bike lights this year too and we were able to give a lot away which is great Super. and lights and tail lights yeah and okay. emily i'm happy to get you your um the current budget uh status and oh, find that out for you yeah. and just let you know because i can go through uh um through our our ledgers just to see what the numbers at which i we off the top of my head i believe we bought something in like early july and since then, I don't think anything's been purchased. So I think you guys have a pretty good amount in your budget from the city, from the city side. So okay. Greg, we we just we need to get bids, right? Three three bids if we want to purchase, let's say bicycles. Well, for the are you talking for the grant or for any purchases? No, for any for our budget that we have money left over for this year. It it all depends on how much you're you're asking. Um, you know, if if it's over. If it's over um, a certain amount, you have to get three bids. Um, anything over, top of my head. So you guys have to follow the same purchasing guidelines that that the rest of the city has to. Um, so you guys are no different. Um, so if you want to purchase something, it's at least two quotes. Um, they just changed the purchasing guidelines, so I just need to. I just want to confirm the the number. Um, but at least two quotes um, have to be uh, supplied. And in some cases, uh, I believe anything over 5,000, but don't quote me on that, is you need three bids. But at any rate, you, you need at least two. Okay. Um, I guess our next agenda item kind of touches on what we were just talking about here, the bike valet and bike repair planning. Nick, I, I kind of wanted to just summarize what our strategic plan was for the bike valet, what we're envisioning for next year, but also just the transportation and the opportunity to improve on that process. If you had any feedback 
um, for what we can improve on for next year on the bike valet program. I would love to hear from you. Yeah, I think we've um, kind of learned a lot since uh, starting it this year. Big thing, as you alluded to before, is the insurance. And uh, the mayor and Tom mentioned during our meeting that we would get more of a formal stance, I guess you could say, as to like uh, whether the city insurance is applicable during a private event. Um, because that would help a lot. Uh, and I think just uh, getting in touch with the organizers for the different events that we want to have these valets at ahead of time uh, is kind of key. And uh, understanding what their expectations of what we bring to the table and uh, what sort of um, preparations we have for, like, uh, things that could go wrong uh, are clear to them. Now, um, making those connections, I think, uh, was kind of the challenge with the Sono Half Marathon. So ensuring that we have like uh, a connection to actually talk to and making that connection early on, I think is kind of the best way, just time in general. Okay. So having like a, a clear point of contact for these events and then definitely events that are interested in having the bike valet program and then clear, you know, insurance policy with the city and like you talked about. Um, yep. And then tying that into, yeah, potentially building on the bike valet program and having that bike repair pop up I know the Nora Walk by Co-op used to exist and do that um, over the summer when we had Sam Ebert on our commission who was working at Cannondale. Um, I, we talked about that with the mayor and Tom Livingston, and they were also very interested in, you know, reviving that um, opportunity. So whether, yeah, that's something we can spend budget on or partner with a local bike shop, um, I would love to bring that up in our next meeting as well. Um, so then moving forward, our education subcommittee updates, I, we've touched on a few of these. I apologize already. I, I think I've sent over kind of a few little duplicates, but we talked about, um, the opportunity to start with bike safety courses. So that's a big undertaking of our educational subcommittee, which consists of um, some of our commissioners here, Christine, Manny, myself, um, and then uh, Julia Green from the Norwalk Health Department, Brianna Iorfino from New Vance Health, and we're continuing to build on that. We just met with the CT State Norwalk uh, group with the Wellness Committee there, and we're hoping to bring them into our educational subcommittee and hopefully ultimately bring in this opportunity to um, collaborate on bike safety courses at that college. So um, that's one big update um, on a meeting that we had in Julia. Now that you're here, I don't know, was there anything else you wanted to add on with that meeting with Pat and Paul and um, Angela, excuse me? Um, Emily, I think you've covered the basics from what I heard. I was a little late when you actually did go over everything. So I'm not sure what exactly you missed, but I think you cover the basics. Um, the future plans. And then I don't know if you touched on Nor Walker earlier when I wasn't in, in attendance, but we were also discussing a new um, bike, uh, not bike, I'm sorry, walking path on Connecticut State Norwalk because we currently have a Nor Walker map there um, with two routes that they just actually landmarked with signs, which is awesome, but they're not very ADA compliant. So they did bring up that they have somebody that sits on the wellness committee that um, is in a wheelchair. So they're trying to figure out a, another, an additional path to add on to the Norwalker um, map that's ADA, more ADA accessible. Um, but I think that's the only other thing. I think you mentioned pretty much the other plans with biking and all of that stuff, so. Great, thank you, Julia. 
And then just next items on our educational subcommittee update that we already talked about that league certified instructor um, certification happening in April in New Haven. Um, I will continue to uh, gauge interest on anyone interested in becoming a league certified instructor, whether you're with the commission or a volunteer or just flying that opportunity. Um, so we'll continue that conversation. And then the other opportunity that came our way is we connected with um, an organization called Filling in the Blanks. Um, and they uh, they are um, an organization that provide uh, food security to um, residents or locals here in Norwalk. And they have uh, this bus, it's the, um, I'm so sorry. It's it's like the micro. It's not a micro bus. It's a model bus. Or they they have some event every Saturday starting in the spring that they're um, giving away food. And they talk to us as the bike walk commission about doing a tabling event there because most of their um, uh, participants are coming either via uh, walk walking or biking or carpooling or public transit. So we talked about the opportunity to connect with those individuals and residents around Norwalk. Um, so I wanted to bring up that opportunity to our educational subcommittee as well um, and continue to build on that in the spring. So I can bring that up um, at a later event too when they're available to talk more about it. Um, and then we touched on other event um, and bike valley opportunities already. But Manny, I wanted to give you the chance to, if there was anything else with our educational subcommittee, I know we meet outside of this commission meeting, but if there was anything else um, before we wrap up this year for the new year that you wanted to add. No, I think um, I'm excited to venture into the fill in the blanks um, collaboration and just kind of see, you know, how we can be supportive and engage the community in that way, I think. <clears throat> What excites me about it is that it also hits some of our other strategic planning um, parts, like, you know, um, including like um, collaborating with like a like a, another entity or like another population um, out, you know, within the, the nor you know, the diverse, the diversity that is presented in Norwalk. And so I think that is exciting to me that um, we get to tap into that. Um, demographic people who are util you know who are food insecure and utilize public transportation and walk everywhere and I think that's really exciting for me so I'm I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, thanks, Fanny. Um, anything else from any other commissioners? Any questions or comments about the educational subcommittee or from members of the public? Uh, Becca. That... What other subcommittees, if any, do we have? I believe right now it's just the educational subcommittee that I know of officially. Super. So is the purpose of a subcommittee like to tackle a specific project or angle? It's really, yeah, uh, it's to give us a little more time to meet outside of this call to discuss in more detail our strategy behind our educational materials, so our social posts, the videos we've been working on, and then these events that we had recently, like the Bike Walk Roll to School event uh, with the public schools and, and Christine and Julia put together the educational materials for that, making sure we had everything we needed there. But yeah, it's it's, I would say we try and meet I think it was every other, every, like bi-weekly, bi-monthly potentially on Fridays, but we also were engaging with other groups too to kind of expand on our connections between the Bike Walk Commission and other, you know, organizations doing similar work to us. So cool. that sort of opportunity. Okay. Um, and then our last item on our agenda here is any new business, which I, I do see I added here, invite our transit district representative. So thank you so much, Rick, for joining us tonight. Um, I, I can't believe this is the last item on our agenda, I'm sorry, to discuss the bus shelter and the bike friendly business applications. Was I the one who added this as an item, Greg, or Christine, was this one, one that you had added or was this 
was this me that I added this one? I might have been added it based on the list you provide. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't I didn't add anything, but it was mentioned last time. It was. And I know there was one on um there was that uh one shelter that we discussed that I know had Judd had also discussed in the past across from the DMV, but we talked about potentially involving you know, more members from the transit district and, and um, opportunities to collaborate on ways to improve, you know, walkability between or just pedestrian safety in those areas. So, uh, Rick, thank you again for joining us tonight. And if there is any opportunity for the Bike Walk Commission to get involved in, um, or collaborate with you in ways to encourage, you know, safe traveling around bus stops are ways that we can help improve um, that with you. Uh, please definitely let us know. Is Rick still on? Yes, I'm here. So Rick, I just have a question. Um, Emily, and I know we're running out of time here, but you know, it's, it's a little surprising to me and that there's such a lack of covered bus shelters. And there's so many people using the bus, like for example, Stu Leonard's. I mean, I people, to, it's it's so hard to watch people coming from Bridgeport and then after an eight hour shift, standing in the pouring rain without something over their head. I, I just find it astounding. And, and I'm not being critical, I'm trying to understand and I believe Stu Leonard's in particular is a historical location because of a tree there and they can't put a shelter there. But with the amount of money that is spent in that store, I find it shocking. And DMV is another example. So I don't know how we can move the needle on getting more covered bus shelters in Norwalk, but I would love to try to move the needle. Well, I can tell you that the state has a new program now uh, for bus shelters and benches and other kinds of infrastructure. Um, they're looking for uniformity across Connecticut. They're, that really hasn't existed to this point. And I think there are some bad example, examples of bus shelters that went in, and particularly in the area of West Haven. Um, so this is just getting rolled out now, and we are preparing a list of new shelter locations for the state to go into this program. And if you have others, I, I know I'm aware of the one at 527 Maine. Um, I think there's some complications with that, um, with the improvements that are supposed to be going in and also the the footprint there. I'm not sure you could put in a full-size shelter, but um, if there are other locations, we are coming up with that list now. And um, you know, it could be it could be coming out soon, relatively soon, to get this stuff rolled out because they have vendors selected and they have contractors selected to do the installations. Thank you, Rick. Um, does anyone else have any questions for Rick while we have him here? And thank you again for joining us and answering our questions tonight. I'm oh, sorry, I have another question for Rick. Are, are you asking us like, so we we do uh, make recommendations, right? For for the city, for, for bike walk suggestions, right? Are you asking us like to, or sh locations where we see a need or you're well aware of the need in the city? I think you shouldn't assume that um if you have locations you think we should take a look at there there is going to be a there's metrics that the state is looking at as far as number of boardings at these stops for something that would that they would consider justifiable to have a shelter installed but if you have some locations for us to look at you just mentioned Stu Leonard's so we can look at Stu Leonard's um then uh, I I would say yeah let us know Oh, I, I missed that. Thank you, Christine. What's the best way, Rick, for us to provide that feedback to you? You mentioned that there's a new program starting and you have a list of shelters, but is there like a project website or an email or something? Well, you can just contact us. I mean, my, my email is rschreiner at norwalktransit.com. Perfect. Thank you.
Christine, did you have any other follow-up questions? No, thanks again for being here. Okay, and then with that, I guess our last item here, and it's 7.30 on the dot, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting. And I did, I just wanna make note, I did send Eileen two edits uh, to the minutes. I noticed Becca, your last name needed to be corrected. Um, and then there was one other minor grammatical thing, but did, yeah, I guess, did any other um, commissioners have any notes or read the minutes or have any edits there? If not, can I entertain a motion to approve the minutes? I motion to approve the minutes from the November 4th, 2024 meeting. Thank you, Nick. I have a second. Anyone? Thank you, Becca. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Thank you. Minutes are approved. Okay. And I think that's it, unless anyone has anything else they want to add quickly. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> Is it too early to say that? I guess so. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Christine, I see you. Okay. I second. And many seconds. All in favor? Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a great night. Happy have a good end night. of December. Thank you. Thank you, Dylene, again. <laughs> Bye. You're welcome. Have a good night.